Number six then from the 2016 Advanced Higher Maths, we got six marks for a McLaurin's expansion. In fact, look at this one, signs and E's. Those are ones that you know. You can save a lot of working out if you just memorize E to the X. And then get this product of these two. So first of all, this part here. Now there's two techniques. You can just start from scratch and find expressions for the derivatives and then evaluate them at zero. Or you could remember that e to the x is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial. I know it says just up to x cubed plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial and so on. Because if you remember that, then the sine of x are just alternate terms in it, only with pluses and minuses. And in fact, if you started off by stating this, and of course you didn't need these extra terms because you only had to go up to x cubed, just stating that would have been worth a mark, worth remembering. And from that, sine of x, remember x starts, sine of 0 is 0, so it's not going to start at 1, so it starts at x. And then it's alternate terms, it'll be the x, and it'll be the x cubed over 3 factorial. And they go alternate positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And if you did that, that would get you a mark. So the two things that they're looking for was find an expansion for sine 3x. Well, sine 3x simply means replacing the x's with 3x's. That will be 3x minus 3x cubed over 3 factorial. So that will be 3x minus, now that three, one of those threes rather will knock out that three, but I've still got two of them. So it'll be nine over two minus nine over two x cubed. Just write it again. That's sine three x. If you do that, you get a mark. And similarly, e to the four x will just be this with the x's replaced with four x's. So one plus four x plus four x squared over 2 factorial plus 4x cubed over 3 factorial and then just tidy it up so e to the 4x will be 1 plus 4x that 2 will knock that 16 down to an 8 so plus 8x squared the 2 in this will half that number so that 64 will drop to 32 so 32 upon 3x cubed is the fourth mark So now for the final two marks, what's the product e to the 4x times sine 3x? One thing though, if you're multiplying those, there's no point in using any products that will give you a power greater than 3. So straight away, this part here is going to be no use to you. You can write it down anyway, because the lowest x here is an x power 1. I'll put it down anyway. 1 plus 4x plus 8x squared and... This term's actually useless to you, but I'll put it down. Times 3x minus 9 upon 2x cubed. Now, just putting those two expressions together in the product gets you the fifth mark. So, now just multiply it out. Only multiplying out the ones that will be useful to you. Anything bigger than x to the 3 doesn't get put down. So, 1 can multiply them both. That'll give me 3x whoops, minus 9 upon 2x cubed. 4x can multiply that one, so plus 12x squared. No point multiplying that. 8x squared can multiply that, right? So I've got a 24x cubed. But then after that, everything's getting too high. Power 5 and so on, power 4, power 6. So you've only got those four terms to tidy up. So finally, the answer will be, put them in order, 3x, only one thing saying x squared, plus 12x squared. And then this part... 24 minus 9 upon 2. So that's 48 take away 9, which will give you 39 for the sixth mark. Or the alternative, just start from scratch and go through the derivatives. So if I call that f of x, then the first derivative will be the cosine of 3x but multiplying by the inner derivative times 3. The next derivative will be 
Multiplying again will be nine times goes back to sine x. One that goes back is negative sine x. The third derivative of 3x goes back to cos 3x again. Stays negative, so it'll be negative 27 cos 3x. Now this time there's a variety of ways for the first mark. Either you get your first mark for going through all the derivatives, or you get the mark for going through all the evaluations. You'd have to do your derivatives first. Or it says you'd get the mark if you just do the first two derivatives and evaluations. Basically it's just you have to go through all of this for the first mark. So what's f of 0 then? Well, sine of 0 is 0. And of course, you're not looking for the first three terms. You're only looking for the term up to x cubed. So it will do when you stop here, even if they're all zeros. f dashed of 0, well, cos of 0 is 1, so that'll be 3. Next one's back to 0 again. And then this one, back to cos, that'll be a 1, will be negative 27. Now you get a mark. Now you've got to put it all together. You don't need to write out the expansion, I'll just put it down here. f of x would be sigma, I'll just put this, n equals 0 to infinity, f n x to the n over n factorial. So which n's have we got? We've only got these two, 1 and 3. So that means sine 3x will be 3, being the first one, x to the 1 over 1 factorial, plus negative 27, that's the third one, x to the 3 over 3 factorial. So sine 3x, maybe I'll not write that down, is going to be 3x minus, and as before, 9 upon 2x cubed. Now you get a mark. Similarly for e to the 4x. I'll call it something else this time. G of x is e to the 4x. Right, so g dashed of x is 4e to the 4x. Next one is 16e to the 4x. Next one is 64e to the 4x. But you still need evaluating. Again, the same thing applies. There's a variety of ways of allocating the first mark. But in the end, essentially, as you don't get the first mark to have done the whole business, really. So g of 0. Well, e to the power 0, these are all 1, so it's just whatever the numbers are in front. So that'll be 1. g dashed of 0 will be 4. g double dashed will be 16. And the last derivative will be 64. Lengthy-ish, you're better off remembering e to the x, and then the rest follows, if you get that type of question, that is. And then using the same pattern, whoops, you have e to the 4x will be, and then it's You've got them all here, so it's 1 e x to the 0 over 0 factorial, 4 x to the 1 over 1 factorial, 16 x to the 2 over 2 factorial, 64 x to the 3 over 3 factorial. So e to the 4x will be, that's just 1, but 0 factorial is defined to be 1. There's only one way to choose none from none. Plus 4x plus a 2 will drop that down to an 8x squared, plus the 2 will knock it down to 32, but you're stuck with the 3, 32 upon 3x cubed. Now you get that mark, forgot, of course you get a mark for going through that big bundle of stuff. But then it's just as before, you multiply them together. Again, noting this particular term is no use to you in your multiplication if you only want to get to x cubed. So as before, The same result for those two marks. Showing the multiplication, of course, first of all, the two brackets, then multiplying the appropriate terms. And 